if a retaining wall is less than four feet high, then a building permit was not required to install this. And it might have been, but I don't know. It wasn't required. If a retaining wall is further than twice its height from the structure, then in theory, it shouldn't affect the structure's performance. And thereby, is beyond the scope of this inspection. But I'm here. It's beyond the scope. This is a this is a freebie. Railroad ties used as retaining walls have an estimated 14 years service life average. I've had some in my own home, in my house, that lasted a little quite a bit longer actually. But at 14 years, you're going to start looking for signs of advanced aging. Maybe a little loss of integrity. These are some things that you're going to see. Now, I don't do surveys. So I don't know whose property line this retaining wall is on. I don't know who this retaining wall belongs to. The only hard fast rule is there's no hard fast rules. But generally what I hear, the word on the street, is that whoever has the high ground, this is their retaining wall. This would be my client's retaining wall under many circumstances, but not every circumstance. Now over here on the patio they've built up, and that's not a retaining wall, those are landscaping blocks. They're not anchored. They're there just helping. And it's good that they're there because they hold the pressure back towards the house. I cannot tell. I mean it looks like dead men were installed. I don't know if it was filled properly. I don't know if they put geo grid back there. I don't know how it was installed at all. It just seems to be performing the function for which it was intended today. And it happens to be beyond the scope of this inspection report. This is gratis. I was more concerned about it when I saw it online with the wide angle lenses. It looked a lot more predominant, prominent a lot more prominent not that it isn't and when it comes time to replace it it'll there'll be a cost